Hello and welcome to Top of the Line, where we will talk about a variety of sports from pro to college football to wrestling to soccer. I'm Nick Lynch. And I'm Ben Heltzer. So to start the show off today, we will talk about this past week in the NFL, such as the Patriots continuing their 15-game win streak against the Jets, the Cardinals upsetting the Dallas Cowboys, and our picks for Game of the Week, and so much more. Okay, so uh, so Ben, the Jets quarterback situation, we all know that Aaron Rodgers, he tore his Achilles to start off the game in week one, and then in the continuing week, Zach Wilson, he just hasn't been the answer for the Jets. Yeah, I mean, it's a shame what happened to Rodgers in Buffalo, but, like, Zach Wilson isn't the answer, and they need to make a move in free agency, either go after someone like Colin Kaepernick. I know they just signed Trevor Simeon, but, like, if they don't make a move soon, they're going to be stuck with Zach Wilson, and I know that they don't want to be in that position. Yeah, um, the problem, though, with Zach Wilson is just, like, he can't score points. He can't put up any points on the board for the Jets, and a lot of Jets fans are just like they're getting frustrated with it like because Zach Wilson he's this is his third year in the league um you know a lot of people think that he could get better but he just hasn't shown it absolutely I mean he's barely developed since his rookie year like he has he has the arm talent he just he's just making poor decisions and they just turn into turnovers every single time all right so next we're going to talk about the Dallas Cowboys they get upset by 12 points in Arizona on Sunday. And um, the Cardinals, who gave up um, a giant lead against the Giants two weeks ago, this time they finally beat the Cowboys. I mean, yeah, Dallas, after coming off of two straight good wins over the Jets and the Giants, they um, came into the game versus Arizona a little bit, you know, too relaxed, and Arizona took advantage of that. They were able to grab a quick lead, and Dallas could just, they couldn't come back. I mean, a lot of people, they were thinking going into the season that the Cardinals were going to be the worst team in the league. And, like, with Kyler Murray on injured reserve for the first four weeks and Joshua Dobbs um, taking over, like, people are kind of underestimating the Cardinals a little bit. And they have, they have shown that they can compete with these teams and win a few games. I mean, I agree. I mean, if Kyler Murray was playing in uh, against the Giants, they probably would have won that game. And I mean, like they've been competitive in the games they played in. And in my opinion right now, they're definitely not the worst team in the league. And then the Cowboys, on the other hand, um, the defense just struggled. I mean, it's they've been dominating the first two weeks of the season and then all of a sudden, they come into Arizona and they just fall flat. I mean, yeah, it's it's unlike them. I mean, they came into this week as arguably the best defense in the league, and to just fall flat on their face, like you said, against uh, an offense like Arizona, who's supposed to be not very good, is not a good look for the Cowboys' defense. All right, so then we have we moved to Sunday night with the Steelers and the Raiders in Las Vegas. So um, at the end of the game, the Raiders down eight with two and a half minutes left, and they decide to kick the field goal. Um, so what do you think about that? I don't like it. I don't like the move. I think you got to go for it. Um, you're down eight. You have to score a touchdown. But, I mean, overall, I mean, the Raiders just – the offense didn't really show up, you know? I mean, Devontae Adams played amazing, but besides him, they couldn't really get anything going on the ground, and they just couldn't score points. Yeah, I mean the um, the Steelers they improved to two and one, and um, you know the Steelers they kind of lucked out with a win. I feel like because neither team played good on Sunday night, but you know I feel like the Steelers they just played better. Yeah, I um, mean what won them that game was their defense. Mm -hmm. I mean they were able to shut down the Raiders' offense, which I mean we saw Buffalo do last week. So I mean if you shut down the Raiders' offense you know, you can you can win the game. Um, and then we move to Monday night um, with the Rams and the Bengals, the rematch of Super Bowl 50 sits. But the Rams, their struggles continue. They have gone sits and 14 since they won that Super Bowl. And it's just been a disaster in L.A. right now. Yeah, I know. They haven't been great. I mean, at least they got a ring out of it, but like, 
you know, they've just fallen off a cliff ever since. And I mean, Puka Nakua, he's been great this year, but he couldn't really get anything going in the game. The Bengals defense played amazing. But I mean, the Rams are a scrappy team. And I think once they get Cooper Cup back, they'll be they'll be back on track. Of course, last season, you know, the Rams, they dealt with a ton of injuries last year. So, And then um, the game of the week. So what's your take for game of the week? I mean, my pick is Colts-Ravens. I mean, Colts came in as heavy, heavy underdogs. Ravens came in 2-0, and just off a win against the Bengals. And, I mean, the Colts, they, they're they scrappy. The, the, the Ravens let them hang around all game and went into overtime, and the Colts just got, got the ball and kicked the game-winning field goal. My pick for game of the week, I think, is the Chargers-Vikings. That game was competitive the entire time, and, you know, like you never got bored watching a minute of it. So, yeah, absolutely, both of those games were definitely great games. Yeah. Well, that's all we have for today. But don't go anywhere because when we return, Matt and Noah will be talking about the biggest games in college football from sta- from Saturday. So stay right here. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Top of the Line. My name is Noah Muller. And I'm Matthew Palafonte. And today we'll be going over a bunch of the latest college football news and what is going on around the country. So without further ado, let's get started. So Matt, Rutgers, besides this uh, past week losing to Michigan, Rutgers has been on a pretty solid streak here. Yes, I agree. Three and one. Uh, mm-hmm. So how do you think they've performed so far? I think they've performed pretty good, pretty pretty well, I should say. I mean, I think they'll, I think they'll come in um, clutch and b- yeah. b- b- pull it out. I do think there are a few bumps in the road, yeah. but those are uh, very patchable bumps. Yeah. Um, so Texas and uh, quarterback Quinn Ewers have done pretty well ever since beating Alabama, and they're number three in the country. How do you think they've performed this season so far? I think they've performed, I mean, not bad, definitely, but I think they've performed pretty good, pretty pretty good. I think they'll have their their moment, you know? Yeah. I think despite losing uh, superstar running back B. John Robinson in the NFL draft, oh, I yeah. think... Um, I think they've really came in through the pressure. They beat Alabama, and they've just been rock solid throughout this Agreed. whole season so far. Agreed. And so the two most dominant teams in college football by far, Georgia and Michigan, uh, which team do you think, in your opinion, is better? I think I have Michigan on this one. I think I do as well. Georgia lost uh, a bunch of key players in yeah. the draft, Jalen Carter, Kelly Ringo, Nolan yeah. Smith. Just to name a few, but I think um, Michigan will definitely come over Georgia. Yeah, Michigan did have a rough uh, playoff last year, losing to TCU. But I think this year, I think this year is different for them. Yeah, I think they'll definitely. make it out. Mm-hmm. Don't leave just yet. After this break, we'll have more Russian information for you on Top of the Line. Welcome back to Top of the Line. My name is Noah Muller, and my name is Rocco Coppola. And today we'll be talking about WWE, AEW, and all wrestling around the world. So without further ado, let's get ready to rumble. So Rocco, this week we got some breaking news within the WWE universe that um, AEW superstar Jade Cargill signed a multi-year deal. I'm, the details haven't been uh, specified yet, but this is a huge pickup for WWE. What do you think of it? I love the signing. I mean, Jade Cargill, longest reigning TBS champion, was it, in AEW? Yeah. She had an undefeated record for so long. And you look at her resume, it's really good. The superstars that she's beaten and the title reign alone gives her enough clout. I love the signing, and I think no NXT, she needs to go to the main roster immediately. I think she's well-prepared enough to take on that role. Yeah, when you get the ESPN call-up like that, um, you're basically like um, not going to go down to NXT. You're going straight up to the main roster, straight up to the big main event scene. Yeah, I feel like Cody Rhodes is really paving the way, the way I'm sorry, for AEW stars to go to WWE. I mean, Triple H is in charge of creative, and he's treated Cody Rhodes pretty well. I mean, he even got Brian Pillman Jr. going to NXT. I think he's going to thrive in the black and gold brand. Sure, Shawn Michaels is going to take care of him. Yeah, I mean, one um, one little segment, and he's already more interesting than he was in AEW. Yeah. So, two weeks ago on Friday Night SmackDown, we got the return of the People's Champion, Dwayne The Rock Johnson. Rocco, this was an amazing moment, a random moment in Denver, Colorado. How are we feeling about this? Oh, my God. Me and my dad went absolutely crazy. We haven't seen The Rock on WWE television in just about four years. And the pop that he got, it came out that morning that The Rock could have been in Denver. 
which we didn't know for sure because we hadn't seen The Rock in a good minute. And now Dwayne, Dwayne The Rock Johnson is back, baby. Like, Theory, Austin Theory got another rub off another legend. He's gotten a lot of rubs already. I mean, name them. Like, you had him get the rub off of John Cena, Edge, Rey Mysterio, now The Rock. And The Rock is just, nobody, nobody dislikes him. He's awesome. The greatest mic talker ever, period. And I just love the fact that he was so eased back into the role. Doesn't look like he's lost a step in the ring either. Yeah, not at all. That spine buster was super smooth. Also, it looks like Theory really held his own in that segment with The Rock. Um, what did you think of his performance? Yeah, I mean, Austin Theory's got a lot of criticism. And to be honest, I can't really blame the people who criticize him. But what Austin Theory is able to do in the ring, he's fantastic in the ring. He's got the build as well. I feel like he just needs a slight change in character, maybe a face turn. I feel like he's just played out as a heel, and he's not like thriving in that role anymore. There's other heels that are better than him in the company. Got Roman Reigns, Dominic Mysterio. Who else? I mean, even Braun Breaker on NXT looks like he's a better heel than him. It's not good. You're on the main roster. Yeah, it's definitely, um, he definitely needs this face turn coming up for him soon. So, there have been, there's so many wrestlers around the world doing good work. I mean, even recently, Julia Hart from the House of Black has improved her in-ring performance so, so much. Um, who do you think is doing the best work in all of wrestling currently? I mean, it's, there's no debate in my opinion. Three years strong is the tribal chief himself, the head of the table. I got to stick with my boy Roman Reigns. I mean, 1,020 days as champion. He's completely transformed from what he used to be, right? The big dog, nobody liked that. Nobody wanted to see him just win every time. This happy-go-lucky, big, tough guy. No. He's got more than just three moves in his arsenal. He's a great mic talker. He knows how to get the crowd excited but mad at the same time. That's what you look for in the heel. And I think he thrives in that role so well. And him, with Paul Heyman, was the best thing for his career. I say, I have to beg to differ with you. I say doing the best work right now in all of wrestling is his cousin, Main Event Jey Uso. I mean, this guy is getting amazing pops and crowd reactions all around the world on Monday Night Raw. And this face turn has really worked wonders for him. He's good on the mic. He's amazing in the ring. And this single run is elevating him to new heights that he never knew he could reach. Yeah, you just got to wonder if that Jimmy Uso, his twin brother, is going to get the same treatment now with him turning on Jay. And Jimmy, from what we're seeing in short order, he's looked all right. I got to give him that. The crowd doesn't like him. I wouldn't say he's getting as much heat as Dominic Mysterio. That's another level that he's got to reach. But he's certainly on that path. Him and his brother are definitely going to be Hall of Famers one day as the Usos alone. So we got to see if Jimmy and Jay could car carve out their own singles careers. Yeah, and they have they have the time to carve out a few titles in their singles careers, so we just got to see what fate uh, decides for them. Um, so, three years strong, as Rocco said, as the tribal chief and the undisputed WWE champion, Roman Reigns. Rocco, who do you think is going to debunk this amazing historic run from Roman Reigns? Here's where we hit a crossroads, and I still think that Cody Rhodes is going to be the man and should be the man to take out Roman Reigns and end the title reign. You look at what he's gone through in the past year and a half. Return to the Royal Rumble in 2023, which we're still in that year, but you get the idea. Comes back at number 30, and he wins the whole thing, eliminating Gunter to win the Rumble. Everybody thought he was going to win. So did I. So did you. He had it right there, but here's where the Hollywood ending didn't end the way we thought it would. Solo Sokoa came in, hit him with the Samoan spike, and just that's it. Cody's American dream turned into the American nightmare, just like that. And Roman, Roman looks like he's bound to rematch Cody. We haven't seen him in quite a minute as of today, but Cody is still the guy. I know The Rock is going to be around, and I think, I think he's going to meet up with Roman real soon. Whether he fights him at Mania or not, that's, that remains to be seen. What I would do... I would have Roman compete twice at this year's WrestleMania. WrestleMania 40 in Philly, night one, Roman takes on Cody Rhodes in the main event, and I would have Cody win. It's my personal preference, but hey, I wouldn't care if Roman Reigns held the title for another 10 years. That's how good I think he is. 
And then to main event night two, you got Roman Reigns taking on Dwayne The Rock Johnson, and I would love that. Mainly because not only does Cody finally get the American dream that he's been sought after all these years and finishing what his father could never do, but The Rock and Roman Reigns, for years that's been talked about, that's your mega money match. That's going to sell out fast, which I think they're already selling out tickets in Philly, but that's just going to be incredible to see. The atmosphere, the vibe, the feel, it's going to be awesome. And I emphasize the word awesome because The Rock and Roman Reigns are that dang good. They are. They're amazing. I think that Cody Rhodes dethrones Roman at the Royal Rumble in, at Tropicana Field. And then number 30 in the Royal Rumble, we get CM Punk coming back and winning the Rumble and taking on Cody Rhodes at WrestleMania night one in the main event for the WWE Undisputed title. And The Rock and Roman, I feel as if it's more of a family thing. So I feel as if there should be no title involved, only the role of the tribal chief and the leader of the family. Night two main event. I think that would also be a fantastic route to go by because even though Roman, the tribal chief should end at a big time pay-per-view. And I know the Royal Rumble does not hit the same way as WrestleMania, but you could have fans thinking that like, oh, why is Cody fighting him now? It's too early. He's going to lose. Like, no way they'll take the the title off of him before Mania, right? Wrong. This is what's going to happen. So, I would really also consider having him drop the title at the Rumble. You could have a main event, the Rumble. You could have him go against Cody. You don't have to make Cody win the Rumble again or the Chamber. You don't have to go that route. What you could do, you could have it... Everybody thinking that Cody's going to lose because it's before Mania. You could have The Rock coming out in a hoodie and just attacking Cody Rhodes. Which that, that would be incredible. I would really, really love that. Because not only does this set up a big personal feud, Roman's going to be hurt. And he's going to want to know why that Dwayne attacked him. And it's going to be that simple. Dwayne thinks he's the tribal chief. Yeah, that'd be quite the amazing moment. Moving on now, um, the megastar, the biggest baby face in all of WWE and all of wrestling right now, L.A. Knight. What do we think is next for him? What do, you th- what do you think is in the cards? Oh, my God. I am such a big fan of L.A. Knight. I would go as far as to say that I'm a mark of L.A. Knight. L.A. Knight is just so fun to watch. Like, yeah, he could work on his ring skills a little more, but when you're that good on the microphone and you just take the crowd by storm to where they don't turn on you in less than a month like every pro wrestling fan does to every wrestler. It's awesome. And I feel like LA Knight could really thrive even with a mid-card title. So the way that I think that he should go, I would have him win the United States title and then maybe have himself get a little run and then go on a little little raid for the big-time title. Yeah, I think that's definitely the right move there. Yeah. That's all we have for you on wrestling today. But don't leave just yet because coming up next is Marco and Andrew talking about the Premier League on Top of the Line. Hello, I'm Marco Baldino. And I'm Andrew Marissagossi. And we will be covering this week's game week of the Premier League. So we have uh, week six of the Premier League. Uh, With that, we have seven victories and three ties this week. We have Manchester City versus Nottingham Forest. It was 0-2 with a Manchester City victory. Yeah, so you see, like, Manchester City still just sweeping teams. Like, they have a really good team. Really, uh, uh, it's a really hard team to beat coming off a Champions League win, a Premier League win. Like, they seem like they could win it all again with their team. Even though their star player, Kevin De Bruyne, is injured for a while, they're still dominating. Yeah, they, they're still dominant. They have uh, Holland on their team who scored in the 14th minute. So I feel like they could probably do it again. However, the one downside of this game is that uh, one of their players got a red card this game for grabbing another player by the neck, which was very un- unfortunate and unsportsmanlike. Yeah, but it's I find it so much fun to like watch Man City play like – they play so well together. It's a really good team. Yeah, it's a very good team. And now we go Newcastle versus Sheffield United. Eight goals scored by Newcastle, none scored by Sheffield United. Absolute dominant performance by Newcastle. Yeah, it, they completely shut them out. It's really impressive, especially it's like an outlier. 
Yeah, you really never see these kind of scores in soccer yeah. at all. It's so impressive. I'll yeah, I'll very impressive. All right, <laughs> and Chelsea lose 1-0 to Aston Villa. You can see I'm wearing the, the Chelsea jersey, but it's just terrible from Chelsea, like their season so far and like last season. Yeah. Like it's how like they went down so far. Yeah, it's like in the 2016 to 2017 uh, s- season, uh, they were like the winners, and then like – from then on, they would still be like top five, but then when the 2022 season to 2023 happened, they were like 12th, which was devastating. And seeing their downfall continue is very sad. Yeah, right now they're set, like they're in 14th place right now. They only scored five goals this Premier League season and minus one on goal differential. It's embarrassing. Mm-hmm. It's mm-hmm. hard to watch them. Yeah. So we have Arsenal versus and Tottenham's rivalry game ending in a two to two draw, with Hyun Min Son getting a brace. Yeah, two goals. It's a really good. It was a really good, uh, intense game. Um, Arsenal and Tottenham. Um, Tottenham have been performing really good this season. I'm excited to see like where they end up. Even though they lost um, Harry Kane, their star striker, transferred to another team. They're still they're still doing like really good and performing very well. Yeah, you could say that. So with our Premier League table, we have Manchester City, not surprisingly, in first with 18 points, followed by Liverpool at 16 points, being second. And we have Brighton at 15 points, followed by a tie for fourth by Tottenham and Arsenal at 14. Ashton Villa at 12 points for fifth Westernham at 10 points and Newcastle at nine that's the Premier League table for this week and um, Brian um, up there on, top, on the third place which is which they're doing really good they have some really talented players on that team it's really nice to watch them play and that's all for today's episode on top of the line thanks for watching and we hope to see you in the next one